Hey, hello everyone and welcome to another Adobe Live here in the UK at midday. How excellent is that? This is where you'll find us on behance.net slash Adobe Live. Of course, you could watch on YouTube, but you won't be able to get involved in the fabulous chat and talk along with us and ask questions of our amazing guest who today is Chantal Horries. Hi, Horries, Horries. I've nearly got it right. Oh, yes. Yeah, All right. <laughs> you nearly got it right. Yeah, nearly, hi. So nearly. <laughs> Great to have you here. I hope you're having a Thank good day you. and that it's nice where you are. It's it is. very warm here. Is it warm there? It is too, yeah. I'm yeah. in Copenhagen, yeah. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. But that's, yeah, so you're just a little shade, tiny shade north of us. But, yeah, you know, warm everywhere where we are, I think, at the minute. Yeah, it's but sunny. Fantastic. It yeah. is. So, Chantal, we have, I've got to tell you, the most amazing community. I watch the other Adobe live streams sometimes from other parts of the world. Our community is the best one Ooh, here nice. in Europe. I don't just mean the UK. I mean the German stream, the French stream, best community ever. But the UK, maybe just a tiny, tiny bit. Tiny bit uh, better. Tiny bit better. That's tiny bit great. better because it's made of people who visit the other streams as well so <laughs> let's say hi to a few of those people let's say hi to some guy called tim i've seen him before somewhere never heard uh, of it no i know and then we've got sean <laughs> guten tag sean uh, we've got jan hi jan kirsty oh kirsty's in with the german this morning guten morgen well <laughs> fantastic there we go oliver's here Excited about the nature theme of today, which is good. We're going to really enjoy that, I think. And we've got Sandrine. Bonjour, Sandrine. And we have Sarah. Hi. It's too hot. <laughs> oh, and we've got also, let's go for a Galana here. Julia. Julia Seeger. Oh, she hi. She's here with us. Yes, there <laughs> we go. Hi, Julia. We haven't seen you for ages. Angus is here. Daryl's here. Oh, so we've got so many people. I've missed you out. My apologies. But oh, and Doris just sloping in at the end there. Fantastic. So tell us, please, Chantal, tell us a little bit about what we're doing, what we're going to be doing today, perhaps. And then maybe we get a look at some of your other work and get a flavor of who you are and what you do. OK, yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah. So today for today. I will work in Photoshop and I um, have prepared a drawing um, that I'm going to put color on basically in nice. the time that we have as yeah. far as I can get. Um, yeah, so this is my website and I think it's pretty clear that I like to draw mm. nature related things, plants, um, not necessarily realistic ones. Um, yeah. I usually uh, go with a more fantasy made up plants but um it's very inspired by nature yeah um yeah usually Isn't there happens lovely. to be a person in there as well yeah. um uh, yeah I like to play with colors sometimes i animate as you can see here yes i can see bit. that there. Yeah, yeah 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 i have uh done a few of them so they're just they're still images but they're slightly moving which I think is fun. Um, nice. Yeah. Illustrated cinegraphs. Love it. Yeah. 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 That's the name for it. Exactly. Mm. And um, yeah, next to illustrations that are maybe more story driven, I also like to do these made up natural scientific illustrations, like with these minerals or whatever. It's very inspired by scientific stuff. Yeah. It's also really cool. Um, fun to do. Yeah. Yes. And um, other than doing my own things, I work on book covers. Um, I have done magazine covers, as you can see. <laughs> and yeah, I have, a, have an Instagram account if you want to follow me there. Um, or yeah, Twitter as well. Yeah, fantastic. And of course, follow you on Behance, which is, uh, exactly. which is yeah. a good place to follow you too. Well... You're going down very, very well in the chat. So there's uh, there's a lot going on in there. They are loving your work. Yulia is saying her art is so wonderful, which oh, it thank is. You. She loves the one with the cat and the sun. Linda's saying lovely images. Uh, we've got Dee here from China. Hi. Uh, Hi. We, lots of people say nice. The line work is exceptional. Reminds thank me you. of Shoyton Peters, but 
with a whole new mood. Love that. Uh, wonder if Chantal uses Adobe After Effects. Do you use After Effects for your animated parts? No, I did those all in Photoshop with all the animation Photoshop. window. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's, nice. It's just the, the frames, the basic, the simple one. Frame by frame. Frame yeah. animation. Yeah, yeah. Love yeah. it. Love it. No, very well used. It's, uh, yes, loving the pastel colors. Uh, yeah, loving it very much. So this is very good. So today's, tell us a bit about today's piece then as you start. And I mean, of course, I'll field all the questions for you. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, so um, I did this line drawing. Just I came up with uh, it yesterday. Um, and uh, what is there to say? Um, there are plants in there again <laughs> and a person. And um, usually before I start um going in with color i check again whether there's anything i want to maybe modify or change or tweak a bit in the drawing before i start because i um, don't really like to go in again later mm. sometimes i paint over it but um it's something i like to do in the beginning so i'm not sure whether i think her head is maybe a bit too flat so um Tweaks like that are something that I would check on before. Uh, let's see nice. I like this better. I think so. Yeah. Maybe something in between would be good. Uh, I think other than that, I don't really have anything that I would want to change right now. Just a little bit of a more round head <laughs> that's it for that part um and then uh, i have my my color palette here with colors that i really enjoy working with yeah um you will see later though that they probably won't stay exactly like that they change a lot because i use a lot of blending modes and effect layers to get yeah. the colors as i want them but I need something to start with. And I uh, usually just pick something that speaks to me in that moment. <laughs> if I don't have an assignment where it's clear which colors to use, but if I just draw for myself, which I do yeah. now, I just pick one that I um, that I enjoy right now and that I want to work with. And then I will just fill in um, the silhouette Nice. And Sean Hi. is asking in the chat, I guess I know the answer to this, but he's asking in the chat, um, why does Shanta have two sketches open? Is that so you can have one that you can work on zoomed in? Yeah, and you exactly. You can see an overview. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you have the navigator here as well. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Sometimes I like to just have different um, zoom stages yep. <laughs> inside just to see. Maybe I want to have one that's really zoomed out so I have an idea how, the, mm. like I find it really important to look at an image from far away as well and see whether it works. Um, mm. uh, so yeah I, I yeah, I do I do the same myself, to be honest. The, the, yeah. the only thing, I, I get asked a lot about changing the priority between the two windows because people try and drag the bar in the middle of the screen, which of mm -hmm. course doesn't work and it's at the bottom of the screen in that area where you can change the priority over between the two it's a useful thing to have what do you mean by priority oh Which so the dis painting? sorry i mean the distance so if you want so if for example you wanted a uh, bit yeah. more yeah. for the for the zoomed in area okay 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 yeah my apologies sorry i just use the um the mouse scroll thing that's why i didn't yep. know what you were talking about yeah ah Yes. Oh, Jackie in the house. Hi, Jackie Mulbart. Good to see you. Hello. Yeah. yeah so... And Sandrine's saying it's super helpful when you work on minute details. And I've got to be honest, Chantal, I think you're the first guest I've seen on here who uses the navigator and it's so, so useful. Really? I never yeah. shut it off. I mean, it's it's by default on, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. it, yes, it sure. is, but I think it normally lives in the bar oh. on itself. You've normally got the little navigator wheel there. I, 
not sure if it's in the essentials layout. Okay. I think so, it's in the painting uh, layout. Interesting. Yeah, no, the navigator is always there. I don't have, mm. I don't always have two windows open, but the navigator is always there because mm. I need, need at least some, some second mm. uh, look on what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, and by um, filling in the silhouette here, I can I can check it as well, and I can see whether it's um, appealing and whether it works. I find it very helpful for that to have it filled in with color uh, before I um, go into the different, um, like giving the plants a different color as like her hair or whatever. I like to fill in everything in one color first. I love the compositions. I love the flow across the main figure. Thanks. Yeah, I usually start with like one bigger line that just has a flow to it. Um, and just uh, build, build the rest of the drawing around mm -hmm. that. I'm still so impressed with the fact that you got to do an Imagine FX cover. Yeah. It's so cool. That was a highlight for me as well. Because mm. I, I used to read it a lot. I don't do any more. Yeah. Um, but uh, I used to live close to a store where I could buy it. And mm. so then every time I went there, I got it myself. And um, I was really happy when they approached me to do it. Yeah, I bet. Out. Yeah. yeah yeah no i think i said to you in the green room i'm a subscriber for eight years i have a print and digital because mm. while the digital one's handy to read on the ipad i really like thumbing through the magazine yeah itself it feels differently it in big yeah. yeah and you can read it more in a more relaxed way when yeah. when... the only thing is they're in binders here and they're, they're actually right behind me right now i just don't want to lift one up because if i tried from this chair i <laughs> <laughs> probably really injure my arm because they're about that thick oh <laughs> so a lot of magazines lots yeah. of magazines yeah i suppose i should feel guilty about the but i don't know what the composition of the paper is you know so you know it could be could be something uh like builder's waste which cast do of course there's a company called cast in uh, the netherlands who actually make a waterproof paper from building waste and uh -huh. they've got one that's especially textured for artists it's really good paper what's the name again cast k-a-r-s-t yeah i've been around up. for <laughs> been around for a, about two or three years i think but their paper is made from recycled building waste so that's awesome yeah if you I draw on it if yeah. you draw on it with a, with a with a medium that dries waterproof, you can literally drop the book in the bath, <laughs> lift it out, and everything's intact. It, wow, it's amazing. I mean, the pages stick together if, if you've got some things on, but you know that it's yeah. just amazing that you can do that. So if you're out and you start sketching, and you're using maybe I don't know markers or whatever, then uh, it doesn't bleed through. There's no bleed through. Yeah. Um, and I guess I guess liquid paint would just sit on top, right? It was no, 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 because it's made for it, it's still absorbent. That's that's they do an artist series, oh. which is really good. Still absorbent. Cool. Yeah, takes maybe fractionally longer to dry, but it really only is fractionally longer. Oh. Mm, it's exciting stuff. I once bought paper that paper that was made out of stone. That, which was th also that's the same stuff. Is it that, that? That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. It is made from stone, but it's mixed with um, recycled building waste. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe that's the one then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And so Jackie was asking about the navigator window. Can you make it bigger? You can, Jackie. Make it as big yeah. as you want. I can just drag it out here and then when i 
pull it down here, it automatically goes bigger. But for me, the reason I have it is so I can see it very small. And yep. that's why I keep it like this. <laughs> the floating panels got a shrieking with horror uh, emoji from Sean. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you do watercolor art on waterproof paper? Yeah, you can actually, Yulia. Um, you can. I tested a whole load of materials uh, on it, but it can it because it's still absorbent. Yeah, but once the medium has dried, that's it. Becomes one with the paper. Sounds very zen, doesn't it? My watercolor does. has become one with the paper. It is yeah, good stuff. It's finished. It has mm. become one. Yeah. Wee. Check it out. Have a look. You <laughs> say waterproof and absorbent. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> the medium has to bind with it in some way on some level. But yeah, no, check it out for yourself. <laughs> we made waterproof paper. The paint just slides just off. Slides off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tilt it. Yeah. Says an octopus could use that. Wow, that would be epic, wouldn't it? They, there, there you go, Julia. You like you do some fantastic stuff. That that's your homework. Make make his <laughs> create a drawing, yeah, of an octopus with like six sketchbooks <laughs> working on them simultaneously. Only six. Only well, no, I mean it needs two to like lean, right? Well, that's true. You know, yes. Yeah. Two for, I mean, I, I thought if thought if you actually had all eight involved, where's the stability? Yeah, you know, you're so absolutely right. I that's why I went with six. Through that, you know, I mean, I've got four limbs, thinking. but I only use two when I'm drawing. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. I mean, there are videos of pigs painting or something, right? Why not an octopus? I think that's coming. Yeah, I mean, just yes. Sarah's loving the orange. <laughs> Thank you. I do love the orange as well. Mm. I tend to use very warm color color palettes just by per personal preference. Mm. Um, yeah. I find I, I, it... Warm colors make you happier, I think. You know? Yeah, they do. I once heard that red makes you aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> like if you have a wall painted in red. Well, like this one. <laughs> I don't the know idea. if that's true, though. <laughs> no, well, so my studios are painted in red because I thought it was energizing. Oh, is and was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, to a point. But as uh, as you discovered in the green room today, now that, uh, because this studio is moving, so there's, there's actually nothing in front of me now, uh, really. Uh, there's none of the things that are usually there. And we normally have a sound baffle in front. And because that's not there, we couldn't work out why, why my camera was making me look so red. It's because the red, the color of the red wall opposite is uh, is making me very, look very warm <laughs> and energized. But I am energized. This is true. Well, I mean, I am energized, so you know, must work somewhere. However, the new studio is blue, so there you go. Just <laughs> okay. Wanted to try something different now. Yeah, oh, I just, just said no, no more red. It's going to be blue now. Okay. That that's typically me. And then a couple of years time, be no. All right, let's go to orange. I tell you what, I thought when I when I first looked at your work, I thought you've got it's like got you know the the hour golden hour that that photographers have. So mm, they have mm -hmm. that bit just as the sky is slightly underlit and and you get all of that warmth in the sky. That's what I got a sense of when I first looked at your work. Yeah, I it's can as if see that. Everything is golden hour all the time. Yeah. And I love that. Thank you. You know, since I like the, the warm colors, and mm. since uh, I think uh, light and shadows are more interesting when they have mm. like a, like when they are strong and visible, mm. so it's uh, the light comes from more down than up. Um, yeah. I think that's just naturally what turns out. Um, 
how it turns out. And yeah, I can absolutely see that. Mm. Okay. No, it's lovely. I think it's joyful. Thank you. Um, I will. Um, I now have my silhouette, and I think it works. I'm satisfied. I think it's it's okay. So uh, now I want to separate the plant part from the figure, just again with a color, and I pick green just right now because it's the most obvious one to pick. Um, I don't know if it stays green though. Um, and setting the blending mode to hue and yep. just painting over it. Nice. Oh, before that, by the way, I used, I think, um, linear burn. And yep. I, I like to use um, ones that um, color the line work as well. Mm. If you if I use multiply, I think it would just make it darker, which yep. I wasn't going for. And so I I like to use blending modes that, as I said, also mm. change the color of the lines. Um, yeah. Angus in the chat saying red is supposed to increase the pulse rate. It probably does, mm. uh, Angus. It's certainly, it's actually quite difficult on the eyes, red constantly, you know, because it's, uh, it's one of those wavelengths that, causes to use the most energy in that so it's interesting uh, sarah saying i use loads of warm colors and make images warm and warm toned foundation and goncella i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly the red wall is raising your blood pressure <laughs> it's not i'm super calm are you super calm chantal i am but my wall is white <laughs> ah, there you go although i mean super calm uh yeah yeah uh, good. i'm a bit stream nervous but then other than that <laughs> that's a conversation between friends we're just having a nice chat it's all good fun i'm that's watching true. you work which is great for me because i can just sit here and go yeah cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and also great for you because it's just a chat between friends uma corn in the chat hi uma yeah and so um what I think is nice is at, this, at this stage is to define the different elements of the painting that you want to have a clear mm. um, difference of. So um, it reads better. Yep. And for me, this is uh, the plant part and the figure part for now. Um, I'm definitely going to differentiate the figure uh, more as well afterwards, but this should be the um, like the most the the um, strongest difference um, that I'm looking for. Like it. Uh, Sean is asking in chat: Do you make your own brushes? Uh, I did make a few brushes in the past yeah. i'm currently not using them but that doesn't mean i won't use them again because i have phases where i have <laughs> the brush that i'm using at that moment yeah um currently for this first phase i just use a hard round brush um very basic but i um <clears throat> i have made a this it's called aqua in here. It's mm. basically a, a blob of watercolor that I made on paper and then I scanned it in. Mm. And um, it's not working because I'm on the wrong layer. It has like a little bit of an inky oh, um, yeah. style to it. And if you, yeah, that's basically what it looks like. And then I played with the settings so that when I use it, it looks a bit like ink or watercolor. Um, yeah. It's yeah. fun to play around with. So if you just make um, a cool texture on paper and scan it in and make your own brushes from that, it, it adds like a very unique character as well. Mm. I love making brushes out of random stuff. Yeah. What have you yeah. made it them off? Uh, so I make, I make things. I typically, I use capture on my device to make, mm -hmm. uh, to make things, but I will photograph anything really odd. Or I will make things happen. Like I made a brush once out of coffee grains, coffee uh, coffee granules, mm -hmm. which I'd made some paper very, very, very slightly damp. 
and I waited until it was almost dry before sprinkling coffee granules on it and then trying it in two or three different places. So I got them just close enough together to get this weird texture. Yeah. But no, things like that. I love doing weird random stuff and seeing how they work. Yeah, it's so fun and experimental. Mm. I think it... Um, Actually, it's, I think I still use inspires. that brush, you know. Yeah. I do. And it's called Egon. Egon. Egon, because of Egon Sheila. Because I thought the quality of the line that it produced once I'd refined it was very much like the ink work of Egon, Egon Sheila. Hmm. Hmm. That could be. I saw his work once in Vienna. Yes. Very it's cool. really impressive. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sandrine is asking, what is the main difference between hue and color? Uh, Do you want I me to think... get it or let let me try. Let me Go try. I think color has saturation and hue in it. And uh yeah, hue and saturation are separate parts of color, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I only I only I mean I'm I'm glad that you did it. I only dived in because I thought I've just asked you a question. And I don't know how technical you are. <laughs> so I was kind of like, mind you, the a fact little that you, bit. A yeah, little no, bit. no, no, the fact that you said linear. No, but I didn't want to put you in a position where I thought, <gasps> have I asked you? <laughs> have I asked that you? would be fine, though. That would be fine, though. I would be, I would just say, oh, I don't know, but I know how to use it. And it's, I know, okay but I just worry. I never, you know I, know, I always want people to be comfortable and I don't. <laughs> so, but I'm glad. And yes, that, that's exactly what it is, by the way. But uh, so excellent. I passed the test. <laughs> you passed the test. Your badge is on the post. Thanks. Um, every time I um, come to a place where I'm like, I don't know how to continue. Yeah. I um, like to play with effects and gradient maps, which I will just do now and see what comes up because I like to get inspired by that. And last time I was on on the German stream, I was informed that there are really cool new gradients um, that I can use. Yes. I will just uh, put some things on. I know a couple that's, of people cool, who though. start with radial gradients for composition. They basically work out where they want the center of the radial gradient to be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then work from there outwards. I can see that, yeah. Mm. Uh, Ooh. I use everything I can find. <laughs> Just yeah, to good, experiment though. with color, mm. um, get inspired, and try some things. Tim has come up with a really nice little technical technical nugget of information in the chat, our beloved Tim. He says, the blend mode color is sort of a misnomer. Hue and saturation together are actually called chromat chromaticity. Chromaticity. <laughs> chromaticity. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> That's me, the native English speaker. <laughs> and Sandrine has found watercolour paper maker who made paper for an underwater colour artist. That's incredible. Definitely bag on actually copying that uh, link, Sandrine, and I shall have a look at that later on. Thank you very much. Sean Kosal, my Photoshop doesn't have a color blend mode. May need to update. That, yeah, it's fine. It works without the U, Sean. It's all good. It's the same thing. <laughs> Ooh. Every now and then that lights up crazy, doesn't it? What? The 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 whole thing where as you were moving through a couple of those modes. Oh yeah. And, I yeah. love moving through it and I mm. sometimes I I like the moving through more than 
one individual one and then mm -hmm. i'm like i can't settle for one because actually what i like is the the passing through all the options that's weird yeah 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 no it's good Oliver in the chat saying that Sean needs to set his language, set your language to proper English. <laughs> no more picking on Sean, please, for the uh, for the absence of a you in in such words. <laughs> I like it both ways. I like the I like the option to put a you in there if I want to. Looking at the preferences, proper language. <laughs> this is all going on in the chat, um, Chantal. It's all uh, crazy. You and color without. Yeah, the so U. color without <laughs> the with with or without the you. Yeah. Yeah. That must be an ongoing topic, then, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's something that pops up every now and then. Uh, but quite often over the last week or so. Okay. Yep. I don't... Hmm. I have a problem. I, I don't have a problem. Is it working okay. all right? Yeah. Sometimes my... Um, my tablet is a bit weird. Oh, uh, okay. So. I think, yeah, it's... Um... So did you hit one of the toggle keys on the side and it switched it over to this switch display? Mm -hmm. You there's mean a, on the on the um on tablet? the tablet. Yeah, there's a thing. I can't remember what the exact name of the um of the command is, but there's a thing and it suddenly drops into a different mode and your your tablet stops working properly or it works like a quite a few centimeters away from where you're actually working. Oh, I have to check whether it's mm. that because I have that for a couple of months now. Yeah. Usually I just um, pull it out and put it in um, again. Uh, into I'm the just computer. going to try and see if I can, uh, if I can tell you what that is. And by the way, display uh, toggle. Is display the command. toggle okay display toggle that's the command that's the command that sometimes makes uh makes a whack on behave weirdly oh, okay i know it does on on the machine i'm on where you are now uh i'm on a cintiq here and every now and then if i go to adjust the angle of that to work i inadvertently hit that button uh. and suddenly i go back to go and draw something and <laughs> nothing why is doesn't it work <laughs> yeah 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 okay good to know yeah um my, oh, my word sorry oh, i was my word? no 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 i was just gonna say yulia saying she was in the support helpline with wacom for 45 minutes last week to fix her tablet Oof. she had to uninstall a driver install an older version told me not to not to update for now oh terrible oh and she was having a shoelacing effect on her brush strokes oh you just want to draw you just, just want, to draw. want to draw i've actually i've actually for the tablet side of things i've actually moved away from wacom so i, know, I only use a tablet when i'm traveling um mm. but i've moved away from them i'm using something from sense labs now which i really really like i haven't heard of sense labs mm, with an x so x-e-n-c-e -E labs Mm. They make really, and what's really nice about it is the driver is graphic and really good, in my opinion. Cool. I love the way this is ev with evolving so quickly here. With I'm glad that you say that because I'm like, oh man, nothing is happening. This is boring. no, it is, but it, <laughs> no, it is though. Okay, and it's. I'm glad. And you're making it look effortless. Huh. Yeah. Um, this is really how I how I often do it. And I accept that there will be uh, stages where I don't like it and stages where I have to throw something new on it um, 
to get going again. Yeah. Yeah. Also, my layer management is really bad, so please don't look at me for being good at that. I never name them, and sometimes I just have empty layers in between. Yeah. Because I wanted to start a new one, then I did something else, and then instead of going back to the new one that I made, I just make a new one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. I'm not good at this. Does it work for you, though, It Chantel? works for me. Then that is fine. Yeah, I know. That's perfect. I just want uh, anybody who maybe has the same, uh, does it the same way to say yep. it is okay. It's <laughs> uh, Tim, by the way, in the chat is saying discount code Harmer25. I'm not endorsing somebody else's tablet, Tim. I'm just telling them what I use if they want to check them out. Wow. Jackie, are you seriously using an A5 size Wacom from 20 years ago? Oh, that's old. That's crazy. Sarah's loving the drawing. Thank you. And Sandrine uses an, a, a, another kind of tablet, which um, and she has an express key that's set to split view and normal view. So that's kind of nice. You jump into that view like that. Oh, and Tim's given you a tip for getting rid of any of those layers that are empty. Ooh. Go to the file menu, go to scripts and select delete all empty layers. There you go. That's really good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I can make chalking one use up to ten that. there. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to make a um, like a print or a pattern mm. for the um, clothes she is wearing. So I yeah. just scribble all over it and use a mask to just. Uh, I love that. Put it in again where I want it. <laughs> and this way it doesn't I, if I would just paint it in very carefully you wouldn't have like the the gesture really yeah. and this way I can uh, keep that and of course you can vary the opacity of the pattern which will yeah. enhance the feeling of form it's really good I like it Exactly. Yeah, you could do mm. that. I often like it very flat, so I just leave it. Do you ever draw in fresco? Have you tried fresco? So that Jackie mentions in the chat um, that she mostly draws in fresco. Do you draw in fresco? Uh, sometimes it? I have tried yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, it's on my iPad. <laughs> yeah. You get get a bit of animation in there, yeah, Chantal, if you wanted to, because in this like one it. here, right in, in, now, no, or... no, no, in, no, in, in the, um, when you work, if you worked in fresco. Oh, I have not done animation in that yet. Yeah, you can do that. That too. Okay. Yeah, 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 and it's actually That's quite cool. good. That's <laughs> it really awesome. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mostly use it for drawing as well. Um, but yeah, coloring is still something I really like to do um, in Photoshop because of all the the effect things that I like to mm. use. Um, and Jackie's saying she has an A3 Wacom, but doesn't doesn't like it much. I had a big Wacom like that, and I found it, but didn't like it very much either. Went back to using a smaller one. Yeah, I have a medium, just yeah. uh, one without the screen, mm. the Intuos thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Yulia actually bought one from Sense Labs. If that's the one you're waiting on, Yulia, you will love it because two pens get a narrow one that's actually like <laughs> holding a pencil, Ooh. which is really cool. 
could you possibly draw with both at the same time? Like I've if not you tried. I wouldn't. Good? I wouldn't have thought. Well, <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. I wouldn't have thought you could. But you know what? Now I want to try. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, oh, little, little, little. I'll have to wait till I go home. Double as one. fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tim reminding. I keep forgetting that, Tim. Of course, Fresco also works on Windows 10. So if you're using Windows 10, you can do it on your desktop as well. Yeah, and Steve's saying about Hui on. Uh, tablets as well, yeah, they, they're around. And Evie's using Fresco mostly now. Nice. Watching Chantel's technical skills and wondering how to translate into Fresco. Well, there you go. That'll be a nice thing to work out. Ruth enjoying the animation in Fresco. I'm going to make the illustration pop a bit more uh, by using a high pass filter. Um, and putting it on a scale that makes sense, like not this, because this is too small, but this would be too big. I look for something that uh, emphasizes the image best. And then um, I put it on soft light and you can now see the difference. Yeah. Um, but I don't want it to be so harsh because that looks a bit mm. weird. I go for a middle ground and now I have like a bit more, a little bit more pop to it. Um, I would say mostly I do that in the end, but sometimes I do that in between as well, just to play around a bit and uh, yeah, <laughs> get some new ideas emphasize certain parts and make some maybe a bit less important what, focus. what I'm wondering now especially because I think this composition lends do you know the um, the collective playing arts the people who do graphic um, playing cards that different artists contribute to no uh, to create a pack so yeah it's a thing called playing arts I think Playing arts. Playing arts, yeah. I think, and I should know this because I have pretty much every pack mm -hmm. that they've done, including, and, and Yulia, I actually, I think I actually sent Yulia one of the proof sheets from there. I think located in Spain. Um, but they do these amazing cards. I could see this current composition easily being a playing card. That's cool. I have to check that out. Like playing card, they are collectibles. Or yeah, they're collectibles. Actually... Yes, yeah. so they do a different. They do these different editions, and there are fifty-two artists for each pack. So they do each. Well, actually, I think there are more. I think there are fifty-six actually because they do some of the like the jokers and whatever else on there. But yeah, no, really mm. cool. I will check that out. Yeah, um, sounds amazing. They are really, really lovely. Yeah, and Yulia's confirming she does have the card proof sheet. <laughs> what are you up to now, Tim? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a few things there's a few things that need uh, need ironing out for M1 Max I think and Sandrine saying you can also use Fresco on Windows based 
I've lost it now. Windows based tablets, Surface, Samsung, HP, and Dell. But of course, now we're in Photoshop, which you can work on on pretty much everything. Desktop wise, anyway. Unless it's Chromebook. <laughs> And Jackie has summed up something here, which I think I said to you a moment a moment ago, uh, Chantelle, about it developing nicely. Jackie's saying, Chantelle has put so much into this illustration that she seems to have missed. It's just happening. And it is. You are making it look effortless. You blink, and suddenly it's like, oh, this has happened now. <laughs> oh, thanks, yeah. Um, it's It's a very experimental process for me as well and i like to work in a way that i get um surprised and excited myself mm. yeah i yes. i have the hardest part with um um with when i know what colors the end results have to have it's the most difficult part for me mm. i mean i do commissions and i do client work where that's the case yeah, and they are much harder for me than just um, doing my own work. Which the fun for me is just looking what I can yeah. create and being surprised myself. And when I have um, a fixed sketch that I have to stick to, that has certain colors for certain areas mm. and stuff like that, um, that's the biggest challenge for me. I mean, it's always a good challenge as well, but it's the most challenging. Yes. Yeah. I think someone's paid you perhaps one of the biggest compliments ever just now. So oh. Ruth in the chat. I'm bad with that. Yeah, now you're <laughs> going to love this one. You might, <laughs> we might need to screenshot it for you. Watching Chantel while drawing is like therapy. I oh. do not need any chocolate at the moment. <laughs> That's that's really nice. That's quite a compliment. <laughs> I'm really happy. <laughs> I'm so chilled and happy. I don't need any chocolate. I love that. Better than chocolate. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that should be your new. <laughs> should be your new byline. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Root. Root. Oh, lovely. And then, of course, a good thing I think to do is always um, maybe if you have colors in your painting already, hmm. to pick them and use them somewhere else Again, maybe not um, with the same significance or the same size or whatever, but mm. just here as I'm doing the color of the dress, put them, put a little bit of it in the flowers again. You don't have to do that, or I don't do that with every color, but mm. it's um, it keeps it together and makes it look more like uh, a unified yep. thing. I mean, I could see how this would quite easily lend itself to a limited edition print. Something like this, this will print nicely. Mm. Do you sell prints? Do you have prints of your work that you sell? I do. I um, Most of the time I sell them on imprint, if okay. that's something people know. I don't know. It's imprint.com, I think. Um mm. But I, I've had, um, I made a limited edition run earlier this year, and I wanted to do one again, but there's nothing planned right now. Um, but as soon as I feel like I have like a bunch of new work that I would love to make prints of, I think I'm going to do that again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah.
Is it imprint or imprint? Wait, let me see. I have to. I always have to see myself imprint. It's like this imprint. Yeah. Imprint. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Yes, I have it. Oh, and you get ten percent off. <laughs> Using code Harma ten. <laughs> And Evie's still waiting for her iPad Photoshop to work. That's interesting. Have you got the got a, 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 a suitable model, Evie? Yeah, and in fact, Sarah's saying this illustration is beautiful. Can you do this as a print? Um, I will upload it to imprint later. Mm. Yeah. Cool. I've never been to Denmark hmm. at all, which is, I'll have to correct that. One of my friends, Niels, is Danish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does he live here as well? No, no, no. He lives here. He hey. lives here in the UK. The um, But Danish is the one of the Nordic languages that's different to, well, is that the one that's, is it? No, no, the one that's very different from everything else is Swedish. Finnish. Finnish. No, it's Finnish. Finnish. And Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish are similar. Yeah. And but Danish has a very different pronunciation than yeah. Norwegian or Swedish. But yeah. Finnish is the one that's very different. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a couple. Well, our own Emma from uh, Adobe Live is, is half Finnish. Hmm. Um. So yeah, yeah. And my friend Tommy Leutman, he's Finnish. Um. I know that I've watched that Icelandic comedian who talks about the. Uh, there's a great uh, Icelandic comedian who talks about how how different all of the Finnish languages are and how it's uh, Finnish all the uh, Nordic languages yeah. are and uh, and talks about them meeting each other and what they're like it's it's quite amusing <laughs> yeah. I I once had a Swedish person tell me that Norwegian and Swedish are pretty similar and they can mm. understand each other pretty well but it's difficult for them to understand uh, Danish, for example. Mm. But probably the other way around as well. I don't know. Suddenly that blue is really, that's very, yeah. Yeah, something that pops mm. in the rest. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Just have to figure out how to place it. Mm. So how is work for you generally at the moment? Is it busy, busy, or is it calming down a little bit for the summer? Or um, I would say it's calming. It's moderate. Yeah, yeah. somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Mm. Starting a new client project soon. and But other than that, I have um, a bit of time to do my own work as well. Mm. Which is nice. Um, Daryl is asking in the chat, which artists inspire you? Oof. It's always a difficult question. Um, I got that last time and I should have prepared an answer for that. Um, I, I There are so many. Um, 
and it's always different. I think the best thing would be to to look at artists I follow on Instagram. Yeah. Um, man, I seriously can't kind of come up with names right now, but um, oh, I think yeah. I think a lot of us are very eclectic, really in in our influences and that you know it is a, yeah. it's a tough question it is to find out who you, you know. it always depends also on the mood and on the day <laughs> and <laughs> yeah i'm i'm really impressed though by um, people who make illustrations or artwork that don't have that much detail but are still super well and well made and I don't know expressive I know it's very different from what I'm doing I have a lot of details in my work and I don't know whether it's because of that but I find it super impressive when somebody is like here I made this and it's like you see they're not how can i say it? not a lot of or it's very abstract and it doesn't have so many elements in there as i would put in there but it's still so good and i admire that i think um i have a hard time just stopping <laughs> i'm just <laughs> i'm just uh, putting in more and more details all the time and i admire it when where i love to look at work from people who are the opposite of that yeah interesting I, I mean i i i do kind of like the idea of you know it isn't what you add in it's what you don't leave out yeah, yeah leave out yeah. yeah i do like that but i also like i like detailed pieces if they're you know that i follow a few um so i quite like to to if when if and when i get uh spare time i like to cut lino and make lino prints mm -hmm. I said, i've got a couple of presses out there uh and i like to do that and i like to try and see how detailed i can get and some of the uh lino cut artists i follow have incredible details in the print and i i just like to look at them and i like to lose myself in mm -hmm. those tiny details i mean i was doing that a moment ago actually when i was looking at the at the the patterning on the legs there of your one like it's, it's just oh. <laughs> yeah she has some tattoos going on yeah yeah but no it's true the leaving out is also mm. super important um but it's yeah as you said it's what you leave out or what you put in yeah um, that's that the choice be, is there yeah yeah And Oliver is providing us with uh, another piece of uh, another nugget of information. Most of the Nordic languages are North Germanic in origin, but Finnish is Uralic. There you go. Yeah, you can see that here on the packaging when you buy groceries or stuff. You always have the ingredients in Norwegian, Finnish, Swedish, and Danish, mm. and all of them look quite similar. Yeah. except for maybe like there are a few letters that are different sometimes mm. but then there's finnish and it looks completely different <laughs> <laughs> yes i think the only finnish i know is how about who i meant that's the only thing i know oh that's finnish, more than i, I know <laughs> what does uh, it say and, uh, hi there oh hi there <laughs> hi okay. everyone Hi. <laughs> See, at least you can you can greet people. <laughs> uh, Evie in in the chat, by the way, is having trouble with Photoshop on the iPad, and and uh, said about it maybe not working in the UK. And I said I I replied to her in the chat and said, "Yeah, it, no, it does work in the UK. I'm in the UK, it works fine." And she's saying maybe it's just whales. Then <laughs> it's not good. That's very funny. I mean, you are laughing at the same time but uh, no i mean do they have even in wales do they have a u in the color yeah possibly yeah well i mean they should do <laughs> maybe that's the <laughs> maybe that's the problem, problem. <laughs> yeah no i i would uh even if i was you i would uninstall 
shut down the iPad, reboot the iPad, reinstall, and then go from there and see how that goes. I think you might have, there might just be something in there conflicting. Daryl saying, checking Instagram artists that people follow is a good starting point. I'm like a magpie of styles. Mm. And Mike saying, can't blame Wales. <laughs> <laughs> always have to be careful because at some point I get too saturated and then I have to tone it down a bit. Mm. I usually end up with colors up here very often. And so the top right hand corner? Yeah, top hand right, yeah. Mm. And then I have to be careful not to go all the way <laughs> uh, because that would could be problematic in printing. Um, yeah. But I like bright colors. Yes. <laughs> we have a television show here called Countdown, which even our beloved Tim knows about Countdown. It's a thing that involves letters and you get a set of vowels and consonants and have to make words from them. Sandra is saying, do they do Countdown in Welsh? I kind of guess so. Uh, but I don't think I tell I don't know. Anyway, now that I know the pet that we've got at least a couple of Welshies in the chat here, but da. Angus says he might need more letter spaces. Welsh is kind of difficult to get your head around. Sometimes the little muta mutations that occur, but then again, so does English. So do you do you go out and do uh, events as well, Chantel? Do you do, do you um, ever speak at anything or? I have done that before, before yeah. in the before times. <laughs> in the before times. <laughs> uh, and um, maybe I will do that again. Yeah, I, I have done one workshop before. Yeah. In person, um, or did comic cons where I presented and sold my work um i would like to do events again um as things are getting more possible again now um hmm. but yeah not so many a few yeah it's good uh good thing to be doing i think yeah, I have done a few more when I was there as an attendee, so not as someone mm. who presents, but um, I think in 2016 or something or 15, I I went to um, these bigger art events. Um, there was one in Portugal uh, I went to. That was, was great. Oh, is that the... Um... The, uh, the it was thingy. a Trojan horse. That's it. I was thinking unicorn. Yeah. The yeah. Isn't that isn't that soon? Is that still? <laughs> <laughs> because I have been there. I think, yeah, 2016 and 17, I think, or something. And then um, I haven't checked the past years. Could be. But they've been in Malta as well for a while. I think mm. and not just in Portugal. Um, yeah. Because I would very much like to visit a friend uh, there. And I, I was trying to remember the name of it. That's why searching Trojan horse was a unicorn. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I knew unicorn was in there somewhere. But yes, Raquel Costa. Do you know Raquel? Raquel Costa? Nope. Yeah, She's so an I'm artist, I assume. Yes, she is. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. a lecturer as well. She teaches too. She's um, 
It's fantastic. It is September the 19th to the 24th. It has always been in September, I think. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't worry, it wasn't important. I said I remember it was in September. Yeah. Mm. I mean, does it make it better or not? That's the question. Oh, the splash of green. I mean, it's the complementary to the orange, so I mean, it's going to make, green. you know, it's going to make the orange zing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I will mm. leave it in. Sometimes I add things, and afterwards, I'm like, "Why did I do that?" <laughs> no, I'm not, well, I mean, you won't know if you don't try. I mean, it's not like absolutely you know, working yeah. on paper where you, you know, where it's an irreversible thing you can just go ahead and try things out yeah and still we try to hit the control z on paper right mm. Mm. <laughs> i do at least all the time ah evie's saying it's lovely to put a face to the artist i admire on instagram there you go oh, thanks hi <laughs> Did you know there's a way you can cycle through those using your keyboard? Oh, is it? Yeah. So, I mean, you'd need to have the move tool selected. Otherwise, you'd be cycling through them using your brush. And that, that's not going to work to the best way. But, yeah, shift plus and shift minus means you can cycle through the blend modes. Oh, I think it doesn't do it on my keyboard. Um, because oh, of course, plus yeah, 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 yeah. All right, okay. I, I, I need to find out what where the regional differences are for these. Um, Jackie's saying she loves the pops of blue. Yeah, that's um, complimentary. Colors mm. are always nice. <laughs> um, could you just try something for did, did you? Could you just try something for me just for a second? Yeah, sure. With that layer, because Jackie's asking something in there. If if you tap V on your keyboard just to get the move tool yeah. selected. Okay, now try that Shift Plus. So hold down Shift. And tap plus. There you oh, go. Yeah. That's so because you didn't have the move tool selected. Thanks. Good oh, spot, okay. Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So you do have it. Anyway, you can now go back to your. <laughs> see your I don't want to. No, now I'm going through around. again and see yeah. what else I could have. <laughs> mm. That's nice too. Hmm. Yeah, I find um, using blending modes and effect layers super cool if you also use masks and only use them in, sometimes in specific areas. So it doesn't look like you put it all over the painting. Sometimes mm. that's what you're going for. But 
I like to use it to just work on a specific area like I'm doing right now where I just put the layering effect only on the um, part with the greenery and leave the other things out. Yes. Do you ever take a do you ever take a snapshot using the history panel and then paint that in on to you know when you've got a change that you like or do you ever create a quick composite of your stack of layers using um so like you bring all uh, make us basically a layer based snapshot oh like this yeah and then mask out and paint in the bits that you really like from yeah one of your, i do uh, your, that yeah 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 mm. so a lot of that it's um yeah it builds up on top of each other like yeah. the entire color coloring that i usually do it's it's not that i know in the beginning which colors i'm going for and then it's a straight okay here i pick red and here i pick orange and here this is green it's more like um it there are new things coming uh on top and they change and they change only partly and until i come to a to an overall look that i really like And again, that's very surprising for me as well. And this way, much more fun. Mm. Yeah. Sandrine in the chat, by the way, saying the snapshot saved her life more than once. Yeah, I use it a lot. Mm. Like in the layers, not in. Yeah. In the in the history panel, yeah. Yeah, not there. Yeah, Jackie is saying, is the snapshot the merge layer onto one layer thing? Yeah, you can do that, Jackie, on a on a UK keyboard using what is affectionately known as the claw shortcut. The claw. <laughs> and it's because you have to form like a claw in your hand to do it. And that is shift option command or shift alt control uh, E. If I recall correctly. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think I have anything here. Something else. I would like to have a gradient from top to bottom, bottom down. Mm. Uh, see how that uh, works out, but I, I'm not sure. Maybe something warm on the top. Mm. Something more cool below. This is a fascinating insight into your process, by the way. It's really lovely. Oh yeah, I'm I'm glad it's uh, it's interesting. I mm. there's a lot a lot of uh, Photoshop action behind it. Yeah, a lot of decision making and yeah, yeah. So we have just a tiny shade over about 15 minutes left as well, just so you okay. know. Okay, thanks. And I ought to let our lovely, lovely community know that, of course, today and this stream, in fact, is the last one for a couple of weeks while uh, the streams are offline. So we all get a little bit of a break, which is nice. So we'll be back with you in a couple of weeks time. Stay tuned on behearts.net slash Adobe Live to see what's going on, but we'll be back with you in a couple of weeks. And let us know, by the way, also uh, what you'd like to see on future streams. Uh, we are definitely up for hearing your suggestions, and you can do that. The best way to do it uh, so that we all get to see it is by going to our Discord channel, which or our Discord server, which Tim is going to pop into the chat for us in a moment. And then... Uh, drop them there so we can see them. That's the best way to get your suggestions seen. What sort of stuff do you want to see? Do you have any particular artists you'd like us to feature? And so on. So those are the good things. And of course, one of the main questions will be is, when is Chantel coming back? <laughs> Somewhere after the street, uh, the break. <laughs> I don't yes, know. <laughs> sometime after the break. It's sometime. just that that's, that's the suggestion I'm putting in right now. When is Chantel coming back? <laughs>
but sometimes you get at a point where you can't put like you can't make it better mm. that's usually a sign that it's Yes, and I'm I'm reliably informed by the chat that you will be welcome again. So, there thank you, go. you, thank you. It's always fun, and I'm uh, I think I'm, I'm much quicker in a stream. Interestingly, I think I overthink things much more when I don't uh, have people watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get what. No. Jackie's saying it's awesome to see Photoshop used in this way. Lots of blend modes for illustration. Oliver says you're definitely welcome again. Yay. <laughs> Yes, this is coming together nicely. So do you get to, do you go out and spend much time in nature? I mean, nature's a big thing in your work. Do you spend time in nature? Um, I do in the sense that I go on walks. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, mm. I like to hike, but I don't do it very often. Okay. Um, I think I would like to do it more, mm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, since I have a little child, I go out for walks quite often, and we live yeah. next to a um, um, to to a park, a big like nature reserve park here, and um, it's right in front of our house, basically, and mm. that's oh, really, fantastic. really really nice and inspiring, yeah. Mm. it's great introducing children to to the world around them mm. and seeing through their eyes when they see things for the first time oh and, it is yeah and it's like wow <laughs> and i mean you can have all the amazing toys in the world at home but at the moment the best thing for her is just to get out and walk around and yeah yeah so much to see no oh, it's lovely I don't know if it made it better. Yeah, Umicorn's saying very convenient, right in front of your house. Epic. That's really good. It is. Yeah, yeah. we have like the last house in this end of Copenhagen. It's mm. it's a bigger house with like a lot of uh, different apartments, but it stops right there. It's not like yeah. you have it fading out with smaller houses. No, it's like stop. And then there's just <laughs> nature until you reach the sea. And oh, wow. It's really nice. Lovely. Yeah. I can't decide. Usually if I can't decide, I go to with something in the middle <laughs> with the opacity. And sometimes that works. And sometimes I feel like I'm making bad compromises. I don't know. I have a system. My system for determining how much is too much or too little mm. is I, I will always crank something up to the maximum. Mm -hmm. And then I will divide that in half and mm -hmm. think, is that too little or too much? And, if and then you either go up yeah, yeah, or, down, yeah, or the down. And eventually yeah. by doing that, it's like shuffling something backwards and forwards yeah. until you end up with, with the right. Yeah, you're basically form. bisecting it until you find yeah, the... That's uh, it. Until, yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Sandrine's made, the, made an amusing comment in the chat about the history panel. 
or history panels. Did anyone has anyone ever used the non-linear history? And if yes, are they still sane? <laughs> <laughs> you are a card, Sandrine. Uh, Oliver would like to be able to go for walks from home instead of having to drive somewhere first. Yeah. You get that. So Oliver in the chat has just taken part in, in Instagram on 30, I think it finished a, a week or so ago, 30 Days Wild, where he's been out photographing uh, every day a different thing makes some lovely lovely nature photos uh, Oliver nice. does mm. yeah and Sandrine's quoting the catch an iceman rule do your retouches and lower the opacity to 70% at the end <laughs> Evie's turning her garden into a place she can take inspiration from she can see the Clidian, Clidian Hills and a castle from it. And they're trying to get the kids to appreciate our home for creative inspiration. Oh, that's wow. lovely. That oh, it was 13 like a nice days view. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And actually 30 days wild finished 13 days ago. I feel like I've been time traveling. How's 13 days ago? Really? Crazy. So I think at this point, I'm just trying to clean up a bit and mm. maybe I can come up with a few more things I would like to do with it. Maybe I will decide afterwards that that's enough. Um, So a nice new foreground feature color, which is taking us from one sector of orange at the moment through to another. Nice. Yeah, I'm not sure about the color, though. No. Well, I mean, I you're, you're doing a, a value based thing now, of course, with that, with the, the darkness is doing the, uh, the darker color that you're using at the moment, of course, is. Is providing yeah. a bridge between the two, I think. Mm. Mm. So we have just about five minutes left. Oh. I felt like I was on a Bake Off show then. Bakers, you have five minutes remaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking in the beginning when you when you said, so you have 90 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Evie is asking, do you use texture? Um, I do. I did use it more in the past. I have um, papers that I scanned in and use for texture, like different, with different um, grain um, or things where I would have just uh, taken a 
pencil and just um I just rubbed it on its side across a, a piece exactly of paper. Yeah, 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 yeah and scanned yeah. that um it's really cool to just overlay um or multiply it on your depending on how you want to affect yeah. it on your um on your artwork uh, i sometimes still do that i like to put paper texture on it in the end um but most of the texture that i do have in uh in my work i think comes from um just scribbling um um areas like yeah uh, as you did before to, to exactly get the so dress. yeah i don't may like i i'm not making sure that it is um super smooth or clean when i color something in like mm. here i yeah. let i i let the um the gesture be there and um have things shine through and in that way the texture creates it's it gets created just mm. by itself um it's very easy and digital that, to make everything super clean and smooth and i think if you would like to um like move away from that a bit in your work in digital and have yeah. more character in the gesture just draw like that just mm. i i don't use the filling tool for example or something i really i it's something that i enjoy doing i enjoy just having a small brush and just painting the things in yeah. and like in the beginning where i just paint in the silhouette just by by hand basically yeah. um and in that way um I leave in mistakes and little gaps and whatever and that creates texture in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Good approach. Mm -hmm. Yes. Katarina, who's just joined the chat, by the way, say, whoa, I love this work. Love the colors. And there Thank are. you. <laughs> I'm glad. And there we are. Little flowy hairs are always nice. Mm. Details in the end. Yeah, and I'm not very happy with the hand right here. I think with more time, I would try to mm. change it a bit. But that's something I can do in the end as well. Just overpaint it. Yeah. Well, do you ever uh, take a look at the work of um, Iris, Iris Leiterman, Iraville? No. No? Hmm. I can see a, I can see some sort of possible or synergy. Maybe I have, and I'm mm. just bad with remembering the name because I think I, there are a few artists that, um, or a lot of artists where I would say if I see the work, oh yeah, sure, I have seen that, but I cannot remember the name. And I definitely get influenced by other artists, so. How can you not with the internet? <laughs> it's okay. But at least I got to a point that I'm very happy with. I might spend a bit more time to really finish it, but. <laughs> I muted to cough and realized I didn't, <laughs> didn't did. hit oh. unmute. <clears throat> so I was just tell telling you that we're in the final minute. We needed a bit more. To if you needed a few more minutes, we can. And then I was going to say. Oh, I think yeah. it's fine, though. I mm. I would just put it aside for a little bit mm. and look back at it later and see if I would still do something. Mm. Um. I think I'm happy with the color. What I would do now is thinking maybe to add a bit more shadows and light into it. Um, 
but I don't know. Maybe I will just I just like it this mm, way. I like it. It's really lovely. Thank you. Yeah, and Doris is saying, love the work. Thank you, Chantal and Tony, for the great stream. Yeah. Thanks yes. for having me. Oh, it's been fantastic. Really, really lovely. Well, that is us done for today and indeed done for this season of uh, Adobe Live from here in the UK. So we'll be back with you in August. Uh, don't forget, as I said earlier, pop your suggestions for artists you'd like to see or topics that you'd like to see covered into our Discord. Uh, but for now, it's just for me and Chantel to say cheerio and uh, have a lovely summer. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Chantel. It's been great having you here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Take care now. Bye. Bye.